So what I'm doing here is I'm projecting my screen from my Olympus OMDEM5 Mark II camera because I want to record, I want to make a video recording all of my current settings because I'm going to do a firmware upgrade which is going to reset everything. So we're going to try this and see what happens. So the first thing I want to do here is go to my normal settings. So I'm going to go back up to, oops, get back out of custom, go up to the card setup, come down to resets, come down to my reset number one, which is my normal shooting conditions. All right, and then let's get out of there. Okay, so my normal shooting s settings, I don't know why I have it set for... Let's see which lens is on here. And this is the uh, 14 to 150 millimeter lens. It's f4 at the short end. All right, so I'm going to change the sh aperture control back to f4. I'm going to change the shutter speed up to a thousandth of a second. That's what my my set is supposed to be recording. I'm, I've got the lens cap on the lens. So we're not seeing anything. These are my standard shooting conditions. Um, and I'm not sure which screen I'm on even at the moment. Let me crank through the info to get to a screen. Okay, so this is my normal starting screen. I have um, the blinkies on with black, so that's why we're seeing the uh, blue blinkies. And I have the levels turned on, and I have the live histogram turned on. So that's what I consider my screen number one. And you see we're at, should be at ASA, yes. Go to Super Control Panel, we're at ISO 400, cloudy, white balance. Um, three is natural setting for the JPEGs. Uh, Second curtain sync on using the small focus point, single auto focus with manual touch up. I have the eye uh, detector is off, face detector is off. I'm shooting in Adobe RGB. I'm shooting in um, low speed cluster uh, in the diamond mode to get me to zero anti shock setting. I'm shooting. Um, my JPEGs are large normal plus uh, raw 4.3 format. And I'm using uh, the image stabilizers turned on to auto mode. And I should just go through the buttons probably. The record button is doing recording. F3 I have assigned to focus peaking. F4 is the HDR button. Uh, the button on the lens is the uh, preview uh, button. Or is that the button on the front of the camera? I'm not sure which. Uh, the up arrow is uh, exposure compensation. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, the left arrow goes to the home position for the uh, focusing squares, which is the small box in the center. And I said I'm on second curtain sync. Get back to the, my control panel. Okay, the right arrow is is the uh, flash um, setting. The down arrow is being used for the um, shooting uh, mode. The the uh, oh God, what do you call that? The motor drive mode. All right. All right. BF1, BFN1 is auto exposure, auto focus lock. BF2 is again set for the home position. LFN set for autofocus stop. FN1 is now set for the screen, the, the monitor to back screen button instead of F3. And let me get back there one more time. Okay, F2 is set for multifunction, and I use the um, 
magnification is the one I'm currently using. So those are all the buttons. Let me just go through them quickly. Record, F3 peaking, F4 HDR. That's the depth of preview button is the preview, depth of field preview. Um, up arrow, up arrow was uh, exposure compensation. Left arrow goes into the exposure box, autofocus box, not exposure. Right arrow is flash. Down arrow is uh, motor drive. Okay. Then on the lens itself, BF1 is the auto exposure lock, uh, auto focus lock. BF2 is set for uh, again the home position. Uh, L the LFN button is set for auto focus stop. I don't know why I have it autofocus stop, to tell you the truth, but anyway. Okay, so those are the basic settings for that. So now the various screens. Um, so my screen number one basically is this custom screen, which shows the live histogram, shows the blinkies, and shows the levels. All right, and I'm in scheme number three, by the way, for the uh, type of, of uh, view in the viewfinder. My next screen is a screen that shows all the icons, but not the blinkies, not the levels, not the histogram. My third screen is is just the image. Uh, it also gives a battery warning when the battery is low. My next screen is the uh, icons and the live histogram. And then we go back to my normal screen. So there's, I guess, four screens. Uh, but this is the one I use most of the time. Okay. So I'm in position one for the slide, the switch, the one-two switch. I'm in manual mode on the dial most of the time. I always keep the flash on the camera, but turned to off. Uh, I see I have the Wi-Fi turned off at the moment. It looks like on here. So let's go into the menus and start going through them. So for the card setup, uh, Okay, the my sets, I normally keep four my sets in there. My, my set one is my normal shooting my set. The picture mode is for shooting JPEGs is normal. It's th mode three. The modes here that I'm sh capturing images in for still pictures, I'm using um, uh, low normal for, um, well, I'm sorry, large normal plus JPEG for my... Uh, still picture. For the movie picture, I'm in the uh, FHD A1 30 uh, frames per second mode. Okay. And those are not conventional. I have to play around to get to that one if I remember correctly. All right. Let's go to the back button. Image aspect ratio is 4 to 3. Digital teleconverter is off. Uh, when we go into the various functions here. My normal function is um, for the drive mode is low speed diamond, okay, because I'm using a zero anti-shock setting. Time lapse settings are off at the moment. All right, let's go back. Okay, let's go to shooting menu number two. Bracketing is off. When I do bracket, I will turn it to pretty much auto exposure bracketing and I do five frames a second with uh, one F stop apart. All right. HDR is off again. Uh, well, I guess I leave it off. I haven't used that in a long time. Multiple exposure is off. Keystone correction is off. The anti-shock slash silent mode Okay, for the anti-shock, I have it set for zero seconds. For the silent mode, I have the heart zero seconds. And noise reduction is set for auto. Okay. High-res uh, high shot uh, is off at the moment. But I, when I do turn it on, I use a two-second uh, setting uh, as a, the um, delay before we start taking the picture. And they, be, between the individual shots, I use a two-second delay in case I need to use the flash. All right. For RC mode, uh, we're off at the moment. If I turn it on and go to RC mode. So I usually keep the, the top one set to the, the A channel set to FP TTL with zero compensation. I'm almost always in the high-speed uh, sync mode, 
and uh, and I generally keep the flash on the camera off. And oh, and I set it for high for the connection because we get a shitty connection, and channel one is where everything is set to. Okay. Oops. All right. So let me go back to the menus. And let me turn our C mode off, which is the way I normally keep it. All right, come down to, and I guess that's all there was in there, right? Yes, there was. Come down to, to um, the playback menu. And uh, the orientation is turned on. And I guess nothing else is on at the moment. Um, OK. When I do connect to the phone, I connect using private, not to the phone, to my tablet. I connect using the private mode, and I use the Olympus software. Let's get, let's go down to the firm, to the uh, gear setup menu. I'm sorry, the wrench setup menu. We have the time. It's English. That's set at zeros. My uh, review time is set is off, uh, zero seconds off, basically. And the Wi-Fi settings, uh, when I do turn them on, uh, I go to private usually. Okay. Don't need to put a password in typically. All right. For the uh, menu display, that's left on. My firmware at the moment. The reason I'm doing this video is because I want to upgrade the body from 1.1 to 1.2. The lens, I think, is okay at 1.0, and I don't have the flash connected at the moment. So that should be okay. All right, let's go up through the custom menus. Custom menu A, autofocus menu, focus menu. All right, autofocus mode. For still picture, I'm using single autofocus plus uh, manual touch up. For movie, I'm also using single autofocus plus manual touch up. Okay. For full time autofocus, I'm off. For the auto exposure lock, auto focus lock, I'm using S1, C2, M1. Reset lens, I turn off. I want it, the lens to stay, the focus to stay where I left it when I turn the camera on and off. Bulb time focusing is on. Those are our only options. The focus ring, I like the focus ring to be counterclockwise. Don't know if that's the default or not. Manual focus assist. Um, I have it set. I have the magnify part set on, but I have the peaking set off because I do the peaking with a button instead. And apparently, you can't do both at the same time here. All right, there's more down here. The home setting is the little, uh, the smallest of the squares, and I use the center square for my focusing. Oops, don't want to do that. Sit back to go back to the menu. Okay, and the um, set home. Okay, let me go back one more time. Autofocus illuminator I turn off. Face priority is turned off. Autofocus area pointer. What the hell does that do? Green. Oh, that gives you the green target. Will not display for autofocus when set to off. So I want. I like to have that green box when it locks focus. So I leave that one turned on. Okay, we're into custom menu B, the button functions. So here's what we got. So for the F, um, FN1 function, I use that as my switching between the rear screen and the front screen, the monitor button. FN2 is the multifunction, and I have the multifunction one set to the magnify. Um, F3 function I, I set for peaking. F4 function is set for HDR. The record function is the movie button is set for recording. The button on the front of the camera is uh, preview depth of field preview is what it's set for. Yeah. Then the arrows. So the right arrow is set for flash mode. The down arrow is set for the drive mode. Dire oh, it's set for direct setting actually. Yeah. Okay, and the, um, well, actually, it's the drive mode. That's interesting. Direct setting. Okay, I guess that works. And uh, the direct function is set direct function, so I can assign each of those separately. 
All right, the B1 function, the B2 function, I don't use because I don't have the I don't have the added brackets, so I don't really care what they're set for. The LFN function, which is the button on the lens on some of the lenses, is set for autofocus stop. Uh, autofocus will be deactivated. Focus will be fixed when you press the button. All right, that sounds reasonable. Okay, and uh, is that it there? Okay. So let me go back. All right, the dial function for the P mode, I have it set so that compensation is on the front and the, and the program um, mode is on the back. For the aperture priority mode, again, we do exposure compensation on the front, change the F stop on the back dial. For the um, shutter priority, again, compensation on the front, shutters on the back. I think those are all, are all default settings. Manual, however, I reverse it. For manual, I like to have the shutter speed change with the front dial and the aperture change with the back dial. So that's definitely not, uh, definitely not a uh, default setting. And then for the menus, uh, for the menu, we have the front dial set for forward back and the uh, back dial set for up and down. And the replay menu, have it set the front dial for next, previous and next, and the and the back dial set to magnify. Okay, and let's see, we go back now. The dial direction for exposure, dial direction. I have it set for dial two, which is, um, basically turning it clockwise. And for program shift uh, controlled by dial in the same direction as the SS, I don't know what the hell that's set for. Just believe it's dial one. I don't know why I set it that way. Okay, mode dial function. Uh, so for my set one, I have it assigned to I auto. Okay, for my set two, it's the uh, is on the uh, the uh, art setting on the on the mode dial. Mode uh, my set three is set for screen. My set four is set for the I guess that's the quickie picture one. Yeah. And again, I never use those. The lever function I have it set for for mode one. And mode one, mode two gives me the ISOs and the white balance. Mode one gives me my shutter speed and f-stop. Okay, the optional grip dial function is set for volume control for the headphones. Again, never used it. I don't have the optional grip. Okay, so for, and that was all of the buttons there. Yes, okay. For the release, custom menu C. Oh, God. All right, so custom menu C uh, for release priority sh uh, shutter, uh, single shot rather, is off. Release priority for continuous is off. For the low speed mode, I set it to 5. For the high speed mode, I set it to 10. For the silent shooting, low speed, I have it set to 5. And for high speed, I have it set to 11. For the image stabilizer, I have it set for still pictures to... Um, uh, single IS auto and for the movie it's set for MIS 1 which means the ME stabilizer performs both by sensor shift and digitally so far that's worked pretty good for me yeah I don't know what the 9 millimeter focal length means because I don't really have that a camera that goes anywhere near 9 at the moment but I guess that must be something you put in manually all right now image stabilization is oh continuous image stabilization is off what the hell does that mean image stable sta <whistles> image stabilization deactivated to prioritize the speed of continuous shooting 
So I have it not doing that. That's one of those damn double negatives. So you have to be careful with that setting. Okay, halfway release with image stabilizer. I have that turned on. When set to on, the image stabilizer will work while the shutter button is being pressed. So I like to, I like to see when it autofocuses, I like to see the stabilized view is what this is telling me. Okay, and for the display, let's see what we got here. Oh, God, those are all sub-settings. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm still up in release mode. Uh, image stabilizer, yeah, okay. So the image stabilization is off. The halfway release with image stabilization is on. Lens image st uh, stabilization priority is set to off. Okay, what that means is on to use lens. Oh, okay, I don't have a lens. I don't have any stabilized lenses, so again, it doesn't matter. Okay, get back in there. And what happened to my levels? Okay, and the release time, the release lag time is normal. When the time difference between when the shutter button is pressed and the shutter is released. You can make that shorter or you can make it normal. I leave it on normal. I haven't really missed many shots because of it, at least not yet. Okay. All right. So now down to the display, custom menu D. All right, for HDMI, uh, 1080p, and the HDMI control is off. Video out, we're America, so it's NTSC. Control settings for iAuto, I check all the boxes. For program, auto uh, aperture, shutter, and manual mode, I only use the super control panel. I don't use the live control panel. For the art modes, I'm using the art menu and the live super control panel. Again, don't use the live. I don't like that live control panel. And for the different scenes, we use the scene menu and the live control panel, but not the live, I'm sorry, the live super control panel, not the live control panel. Okay. So, my info settings for playback info, I, I want to see everything that's available, and I'm willing to thumb through them. So, I have all the boxes checked for that. Get the goddamn cord out of my way. Um, okay, for live view info, again, everything's checked. I want to use custom one and custom two menus, because that's how I... That combination allows me to get the blinkies, the levels, and the live histogram on the same screen together, which is important to me. And for the settings, uh, I like to use the, well, I checked everything, uh, basically. That's playback settings. Um, okay. For the display grid, I like to use the 9 grid. And uh, let's see, for picture mode settings, I think I've got absolutely everything checked. Yes, I do. Okay. The histogram settings, I'll use the 255 for highlights and the zero for shadows. That tells you where, where you want the blinkies to come on, basically. Okay, live mode guide, I turn that off. I figured it out a long time ago. Live view boost. For manual shooting, I have the boost turned off. For bulb and time, I have it off. For live composite, I have it off. And for others, I have it off. Some people like to leave it on for live composite, but I don't. Okay, my frame rate is set for normal. My art live view mode is set to mode 1. Uh, my expand live view dynamic range is turned on. I think somebody told me I shouldn't do that, but 
I guess it's okay. I don't really shoot in those modes anyway. Flicker reduction is auto. Live view close-up mode, I'm using mode 2, which says when the shutter button is pressed halfway, autofocus will work while in the enlarged live view, which is another feature that I like very much. Okay, so the this is the depth of preview lock is turned off. All right, and if I see what that does, when set to on, the depth of field preview is maintained even after the button is released. Uh, I only want to see it when I only want to see it darkened down when I'm pressing the actual damn button. Okay, so let's see. Peaking settings, all right, I like to use white, I like to use uh, normal for the intensity, and I and adjust image brightness, no, I like to turn that off. And so far that's worked well for me for focus peaking with most of the subjects I've played with. Backlit LCD, I like, I have it set for one minute. The idea is it darkens the LCD on the back after one minute and not touching the camera. It doesn't turn it off, just darkens it. Sleep, it goes into sleep mode after five minutes. Auto power off is four hours. Um, oh, this is the, the little auto beep that when you focus is, it makes a beep, and I hate that. I turn it off. The USB mode is set for auto. That way, when you plug the camera into the computer, it sort of figures out what you want to do. You don't have to push buttons. The multifunction settings, ah, okay. So what I do for that is I have the color creator turned on. I have the white balance on the front dial and the ISO on the back dial. And I have the magnify and I have image aspect. And the one that I have up all the time is the magnify one. So that's my most important one of those. The rest I don't really use much. Uh, memory recall, I have it set for recall. What does that do? That recalls the latest menu. So, ah, that's good. Recalls the latest menu selection. So when I hit the shutter button to get out of menu mode and go back in, it remembers where it was. and goes back to the right spot, which is very convenient. Okay, the uh, EV st step, I like to use one-third of a EV, one-third of an f-stop for my steps. Noise reduction is off um, normally. Uh, that's the long-term uh, noise reduction when you're shooting it longer than one second. The noise filter is, the no is just removing noise at, at higher ISOs. I keep that turned off. I'd rather do that in processing, post-processing. The ISO, my base ISO is usually 400. Again, my ISO step is a third of an f-stop. The ISO auto set, I limit it to 6400 ISO, and 200 is my the low end. Uh, and I do ISO auto for all, because I want to be able to use ISO auto Auto, I want to be able to use auto ISO even when I'm in manual mode, even though it doesn't work well because you don't have a exposure compensation control. All right, the next item down is metering, and I used the, the multiplex, the entire metering. I don't know what, I forgot what they call that, but it's the top one. It's not the center weighted, it's not the spot metering, it's not the high or the low, it's the multi multi-point metering, multi-matrix metering. I guess that's the, somebody calls it that. Okay, auto exposure lock metering, I have set to auto. Why do I do that? Choose a metering mode by, okay. All right, auto ex, I guess auto's okay for that. The bulb mode timer, I want 30 minutes available to me if I ever need it. The bulb time, time monitor uh, minus seven is the intensity we do that so that it doesn't disturb the person next to us when we're shooting outdoors at night otherwise we put it to zero um, live bulb I, I leave it set for one second I, I'm obviously going to adjust this whenever I go into live bulb or live time mode but but this basically gives me a buildup of the signal uh, of the image on the back of the screen uh, one one per second okay same thing with live time. The composite settings, also I do one second for that. And I will modify those if I need to. All right, so that's the end of that menu. Now, the F menu, uh, the 
synchronization speeds one two fiftieth of a second. For the slow limit, I use thirty seconds. That's not one thirtieth. That's thirty seconds. Uh, I like to be. I like to drag the shutter a lot. Uh, I like to get the ambient light. Uh, this is the cumulative effect of adding together uh, adjustments for flash compensation and exposure compensation. I turn that off because I like them to work independent of each other. All right, and this is the setting for the picture modes. Is that right? Yeah. So for my main shooting, I'm using uh, large JPEGs and large fine JPEGs for the two position. I'm using large normal JPEGs for the three. I'm using uh, medium size uh, normal and small is small size normal. For the pixel count for the middle one, these are defaults, 3200 and 1200. Shading compensation, I leave that on. That's where it gets rid of the vignetting in the corner of the lens, if you have a lens that gives vignetting in the corner. I think that's what it does. Right. Okay. Get out of there. Okay. White balance. My default white balance is always cloudy. I never use auto white balance. Uh, but I'll, I'll use cloudy for most conditions. And if it is a sunny day, I may switch to sunny. Uh, this is all white balance compensation. What the hell does that do? Set the same white balance in all modes. That makes sense. Don't know, even know why they bother with that. Keep the warm colors. No, I do not want to keep the warm colors. I turn that off. This one I jump around a lot on. It's do you want to f use the f the white the flash white balance setting or do you want to use your regular white balance setting or a combination of the two? There's three choices here. Uh, off, use the white balance for flash or use auto. I leave it on auto. That seems to, none of them work very well, but it, it works the best of the three. Color space, Adobe RGB. Okay, under record, erase, quick erase, I have turned off. Uh, when, I'm have, when I'm shooting both RAW plus JPEG, I want to be able to erase both of them and when I erase the image that I see. File name is set for auto. Edit the file name uh, for sRGB. Uh, everything's turned off, so it uses the P101 as the setting. For Adobe, it uses an underscore for Adobe. So my files usually come in with the underscore. Okay. Because I'm shooting all the time in Adobe. Priority set, that is choose the default selection for Confirmation dialogs. Oh, yeah. So when it comes up and you want to erase, it says, are you sure? And it, and it goes to no instead of yes uh, as the default. And that's just a safety factor. The DPI setting doesn't matter. 350 is fine. The copyright, I have it set for on. And I, and I have Dick Budnick for both the artist and the copyright. Okay. Then we go to the movie modes. In the movie mode, my I, I use the movie mode in shutter priority mode because I want to be able to set it for twice the uh, frame rate. Uh, for the movie volume, I want that to be on. The recording volume for the built-in microphone, plus or minus zero. For the external microphone, plus or minus zero. Uh, if serious recording, I'm going to use an external microphone anyway. External recorder uh, with a lapel microphone. Volume limiter is turned on. Noise reduction set for standard. Wind noise reduction. I will jack that up if it is a noisy day. Plug and power is on. I don't really have a mic that needs it. Uh, the mics, I, the lapel mics have their own battery and they need it because they don't work without it, frankly. Uh, okay, PMC recorder microphone link. I have no idea what the fuck that means. Oh, it has to do with an Olympus recorder, which I don't use, so not a concern. Headphone volume is 8. I'm not sure why that got selected. Yeah, it's about in the middle. All right, sounds good. Time code settings are drop frame, count up from record run. Okay, starting time, I don't know. doesn't apply, I guess, at this point. All right, this one's tougher. These are the info settings. So 
in this case I have everything turned on I believe yes I do I keep absolutely everything turned on not exactly sure why movie specification settings all right this is where I've gone in and jacked this around so I changed the, the camera one from whatever the hell the default was to this uh, full high, high definition and A-1, which means something. Let me see what the heck that means. Oh, compression bit. That's, that's the, highest, uh, the highest bit rate, I think. And, uh, and you can see the other ones. I don't, I'm not sure I changed the other ones at all, but I might have. But anyway, the, the first one's the important one. That's the one I'm using all the time. Okay, the movie effects I leave on, they're kind of shitty effects, but who cares. Uh, for movie plus photo mode, I'm using mode 2. And what mode 2 does is the photo is given priority. Movies are recorded before and after the photo is taken. So if I'm shooting a movie and I decide I want to take a picture in the middle of it, then I go over to, I just hit the, the shutter button to take the movie, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, to take the single shot. And after it takes the picture, it st restarts the movie for me. I think it uses the shutter speed that I previously had left the single picture, the still picture uh, shutter set to. I should check that someday to make sure, because it doesn't really mean much if it's, you know, 60th of a second. Yeah. All right, the shutter function, mode one, let's see what that does for me. That's uh, take a photo by pressing the shutter button. All right, I guess I thought that's what the last one did, but I'm going to look at that again. Movies given priority. Okay. I guess those two are related. All right, the built-in electronic viewfinder, I like Style 3, which basically gives me that view to give me the maximum area, even though there's icons spread all over the damn thing. The info settings... Ah, okay, so I want this to be basic, custom, and custom. And remember, you got to set custom as to what, what things you turned on with custom 1 and custom 2. Those were in a previous menu, which I already forgotten where the hell it is. All right. And for the display grid, again, I'm using the 9-box uh, grid. I like the tic-tac-toe pattern for rule of thirds. The electronic viewfinder auto switch has turned on. The adjustment, I don't do any brightness adjustment to the electronic viewfinder. Halfway level is turned on. What does that do for us? Uh, select on to display level gauge in built-in electronic viewfinder. Enable when in electronic viewfinder. I guess I have no idea what that means. Anyway, I probably have never changed it, so it's probably okay. Oops, shit. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so then uh, that was the built-in viewfinder. I wanted to turn that one off. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so do we work our way through that? We did. All right, so the last of the custom menus is the K menu. Pixel mapping I've never done, never needed to do so far. It used to do it automatically on my Minolta camera, Konica Minolta damage camera. Exposure shift. Uh, I'm not doing any of that for any of the modes. Any of the uh, exposure modes. All right, the, the battery warning. As long as I'm using the Olympus batteries, I leave it at zero. When I'm using the third-party batteries, which really suck, particularly in this camera, uh, I would turn it down to the lowest setting, the most negative I could get to. Um, Battery priority, battery battery priority. Again, I'm only using the the battery in the camera. I don't have the the extra grip. So the PA, PBH battery, it would use the battery in the grip first if I had it, but I don't. The level adjustment, uh, that's if you need to tune, if you need to recalibrate the level adjustment. We don't need to do that. Touchscreen settings, I leave on. I do have an iFi card in the camera all the time. Uh, so it transmits my JPEG RAW and movies directly from the camera to the computer whenever I'm within range of the computer. And I do like that. Okay. The electronic zoom speed. Uh, 
I have that set for normal for both the picture and the still pictures and for the movie mode. And the selfie adjust, yeah, you turn that on so that when you flip this, when you're looking in front of the camera at the flip out LCD screen, that it shows you right side up. And quick sleep mode is the most important feature in the camera, and you turn that son of a bitch off as soon as you can.